Hi, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to the very first episode of my new show, Behind the Screens, a show where we get to know some of the most interesting personalities in social media and, coincidentally, some of my friends. Today on the show, we have a very special guest. She was the producer of the longest running weekly burlesque and variety show in the national capital region. She's known as the bombest booty in the book club. She's chronically ill with a license to thrill. Here is my friend, Rhapsody Blue. Hello. Hi, how are you today? I'm doing just fine. How are you? I'm pretty good. Would you like to introduce yourself to our guests? Oh, well, I would love to. My name is Rhapsody Blue. I am a multidisciplinary entertainer. I perform in a variety of different formats and varying degrees of nudity, and I love it. (laughs) Amazing. I'm so happy to have you as my first guest on Behind the Screens, Rhapsody. Well, I'm so happy to be here. It was really important for me to have you in particular as the first guest because I felt like it was something coming full circle because the very first time I got on stage at a burlesque show was because you personally asked me to do it. And we're all very lucky that you did. (laughs) Yes. Okay, Rhapsody, it's time for our first segment, the Backstage Blitz. In this segment, I'll be drawing questions out of this jar and you'll try to answer them the best that you can. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right, first question. Ooh, I drew two at once. Left or right? Left. All right. What's something you're good at, but you're kind of embarrassed that you're good at? Oh, um, Jeopardy. I am really good at remembering useless facts and trivia. <laughs> That's. But why are you embarrassed that you, you're good at Jeopardy? Um, because I forget a lot of very important things in my life. For example, dates, people's birthdays, uh, why I might know the date that a particular piece of writing was published, but not the birthday of, say, someone in my family or my very best friend is deeply embarrassing. Okay, I understand. But that's okay, Rapsy. <laughs> the The calendars are here to help you. And who knows I- that Jeopardy knowledge might come in handy one day time for our second question if i bought you a billboard in times square and gave you six words to sell yourself what would you write six words to sell myself let's see i would say uh rhapsody blue i genuinely believe in you exclamation point Okay, I like it. That's perfect. <laughs> people need someone to believe in them, and I I believe in people. <laughs> I believe in you, Rhapsody Blue. Thank you. <laughs> Third question. Name three items you need in order to do your art. Eyelashes. <laughs> <laughs> High heels. And camp fuel. And camp fuel. Would you like to tell the people why you need camp fuel to do your art? Well, I would say that one of my very favorite artistic disciplines is fire artistry. I'm a fire eater, fire performer, fire dancer is how I usually describe it. And my fuel of choice is naphtha or white gas or camp fuel, Coleman fuel, some people call it. It's what makes the sparkly things light up bright, and I think that it is essential to being a fire performer. Okay, Rhapsody, now it's time for the main event. During this segment, I'm going to be asking you some deeper questions so that we can get to know the journey that you've been on throughout the course of your career. Are you ready? I am ready. All right, let's begin. So Rhapsody, You've witnessed many a baby burlesker, drag performer, and hosts make their debut. Can you tell us about your debut on stage? Wow. Well, my foray into the performing arts came through burlesque, and my burlesque debut 
happened at the 2010 edition of Burlesque Idol. Now, back in the day, this was produced by Rock and Lily Burlesque, who their stage manager at the time, at the time was a uh, breast cancer survivor. I also have a lot of breast cancer in my family, and I was always curious about burlesque, so I figured that this was the perfect opportunity to get involved and try it out. To be honest, I didn't see it going anywhere. I thought this would be a fun story that I would tell to my colleagues at my office job later on. However, of course, you never really know what's coming down the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> Burlesque Idol was my first and only pageant I competed in. I don't tend to enjoy performance arts competitions for myself personally. However, I do support them as I understand their significance, especially to marginalized art forms like drag and ballroom. So Rhapsody, you are very, very passionate about workers' rights and labor movements. Are there any groups in particular that you believe need more support? I absolutely would love to see sex workers get more involved in the labor movement and likewise have the labor movement be more accommodating to sex workers. I think that sex work needs to be destigmatized and could have a lot to contribute to the labor movement, especially because a lot of sex workers have experience working in low wage labor or otherwise marginalized in some way. Mm -hmm. I want to give a quick second to mention uh, work safe, work safe, work safe, which is a labor advocacy organization focusing on strip clubs. Thanks so much for shouting out that organization. I'm going to try to include a link so that people who can benefit from that resource will have access to it um, through this video. It's impossible to talk about burlesque in Ottawa without talking about the wonderful gift to the cultural landscape that was Burlesque Wednesdays. When you look back at those five years, what are you most proud of? My goodness. Burlesque Wednesdays was a great opportunity for me to fulfill some of my artistic goals in that I had the opportunity to invite so many international and touring and headline caliber artists to perform in Ottawa on a small weeknight stage. The reason for this, of course, was that I had the opportunity to show people local to Ottawa that our local artists belonged on a stage placed alongside these international acts. Mm -hmm. It's important for people to know that every headliner, every international touring artist was local to somewhere when they got mm -hmm. started. And we have to support our local talent and our local stages because that's where these big acts come from and that's where they go home to. Similarly, I very much enjoyed the fact that as resident producer of Burlesque Wednesdays, I had the opportunity to invite guest producers, guest productions uh, like, for example, the Francophones, Dangerous Curves, Femme Fatales, the Gender Blender Parties, uh, Welcome to Wakanda, the list really goes on. And I was very proud to be able to offer my home stage to these producers to have a, a, a low risk environment to share their vision with my audiences. And I thought that that was one of my bigger accomplishments as a producer was allowing other producers to cut their teeth on my stage because I really I want to elevate other artists as a performer. That's one of my huge focuses. Well, I want to personally thank you for Burlesque Wednesdays. Burlesque Wednesdays meant a lot to me for multiple reasons. Um, one of the things was when I moved to Ottawa, I kind of lost my performing art community. And I was involved in performance through school, but it was very, very mainstream and, and, um, there wasn't a lot of room for experimenting with things that were uh, taboo or quirky or things like that. And I knew that I belonged surrounded by a colorful cast of characters, but I didn't know where I was going to find those people in a government town. And everyone kept saying to me, you're so artistic. You're so um, cultural. Why did you ever leave the GTA? You're never going to find people like that for you 
here in Ottawa. And I learned about Burlesque Wednesdays and the first time I showed up, I was by myself. I saw the poster and I was like, you know what? It's not that much to get in. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna stand by the bar and have a drink and I'm gonna keep going and maybe someone there that likes people that are a little bit too colorful, a little bit too out there and a little bit too loud, maybe I'll find some friends there. And within a few minutes, I ended up making friends with people who I'm still friends with. And some now some of these people are, you know, traveling the world and they're making appearances on TV. But we met in this little bar with this tiny little stage where it feels like we grew up. I was first a fan of burlesque. And so I was going to the shows pretty regularly, especially there was one summer where I think I was there almost every single week. Um, and then people started to nudge me like, you need to get on the stage. You need to get on the stage. And you never pushed me. You were always like, okay, Andre, whenever you're ready, like, let me know. And <laughs> I didn't start performing until after I, I think in 2017, I started performing because I had this moment um, where I was in the hospital and I was like, if I live, I'm going to do whatever the hell I want to do for the rest of my life. And I contacted you and I was like, we're having the biggest birthday party ever. <laughs> and I had a, a big birthday party on a burlesque Wednesday because burlesque Wednesdays were important to me. And that was my first burlesque act, though I had been on the stage before that because you had asked me to host the Femme Fatale when they came from Toronto and they were and I think still are the only entirely woman of color troupe in Canada. And it was important for you to give them a host who was also a woman of color. And so you were like, I know you've never done this before, but would you consider hosting this burlesque show? And I was like, I did announcements club in school. I can do this. I can do this. And I, I sewed a sparkly, evening gown that was see-through and I showed up with my big hair piece and I just felt like I fell in love with the stage all over again and without burlesque Wednesdays I don't think I would have had such an easy opportunity to get involved in burlesque and find an art form and not just an art form but a community of artists and people that just fully embraced me um, for exactly the person that I was. So I would like to thank you for the amazing gift of Burlesque Wednesdays. I don't oh. think anyone in Ottawa will, I don't, anyone in Ottawa in the performing arts community will never ever be able to forget the amazing run that we had. Well, and I want to thank you for accepting that invitation and performing on the stage. You really knocked it out of the park. And that stage would not have existed without all of the artists who believed in me, who offered their talent and their time and their promotional savvy and all the other brilliant things. And I knew you were going to be excellent. I don't want to, I don't want to brag, but if I say that I think you're going to do a great job, I am very rarely wrong about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I like to think that, Burlesque Wednesdays for a lot of us was like the training wheels. People got to try their hand at producing shows. And sometimes the audience was just all performers, but we still showed up every week. Oh, absolutely. And I think the fact that now that Burlesque Wednesdays is over, the fact that there are so many cool productions and so many cool performers that filled that void right away is evidence of the fact that it succeeded in its mission because training wheels is a great way to put it. I wanted it to be a, a talent incubator. Absolutely. And there are so many incredible performers that are now doing amazing things that I saw them for the first time at Burlesque Wednesdays. And now some of those performers are, you know, traveling the country, traveling internationally. And not only that, Burlesque Wednesdays was a place where international and touring acts came to Ottawa. So I knew I could show up every single Wednesday at the same time and I could have a world of talent brought 
and presented to me for a reasonable price. It was amazing time. Thank you. It was funny because it became a, a destination, a, a destination for performers, not just on stage, but also in the audience. I have had so many emails and messages from performers from other countries who were in Montreal or in Toronto for a gig and then had for whatever reason to come through Ottawa. And they said like, oh, you know, I never would have thought to seek out gig opportunities in Ottawa, but I went to your show and it was a lot of fun. Uh, so there's, that's how I met um, the Baby Grand Burlesque Festival team. They actually just attended a Burlesque Wednesdays. <laughs> uh, that's sorry, they're based in, in Cape Town in South Africa. And wow. Uh, so a lot of friends, not just came, not just kids, that didn't just come to Burlesque Wednesdays as artists, but also as, as guests. Rhapsody, you teach performance arts to other people, but I want to know, what has your journey in performance taught you? Oh, wow. I have a bit of a mantra that I say to myself, and it's, there's always another show. I say this because... You need to know that anytime you make a mistake or something bad happens or something that doesn't doesn't go according to plan, whether it's in your performance life or in your personal life, you know that the only way to fix it is to take that knowledge and move forward. I have had some hilariously catastrophic fuck ups over the course of the 10 years I've performed. Sorry, am I allowed to say? Yeah, you're allowed to swear. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) <clears throat> For example, I recall a show where I caught my heel on a mic cord and did a full-on face plant in front of an audience of 300 people who had paid quite a bit to see the show. My career did not end that day, nor did it end any of the subsequent days when I made mistakes, either large or small. And I want people to know that you can always pick yourself up and you can always keep going. I'm a much more resilient human because I'm a performance artist. I love that answer. And I actually channeled your energy one time. I was on a stage in Montreal and I was dancing full out so much and I was whipping my head around and I was wearing a phony ponytail and the phony ponytail like started to detach and like my first instinct was panic and then I was like but wait this is show business so I ripped the fake ponytail off and then twirled it around and I was like Rhapsody taught me well (laughs) (laughs) like the only way that a like an error can be the end of you is if you let it be the end of you exactly so i was like rock and roll kids let's go (laughs) and audiences love that they love being part of those unique experiences because they know it wasn't planned so then they're part of something that has only ever happened once (laughs) oh yeah and like the the audience after the show they were like you were dancing so hard that your your hair fell off and i'm like yeah Yeah. that's what it is (laughs) So Rhapsody, time for our last question. As someone who is making a living doing your art, what advice can you offer to someone at home who wants to get started or someone who's already started but wants to get good? Ha! Well, first of all, I'd like to start by affirming that performing full-time or doing art full time doesn't make you a better artist. It doesn't make you a more real artist. It doesn't make you more genuine or more qualified. It literally just means that the circumstances of your life are such that full time art is the best option for you. And for a lot of artists, full time art is not the best option. Keeping a regular job can enable you to have the security that you need to explore your performance life in ways you might not be able to do if you are worrying about making ends meet. Mm. I also want to like reemphasize that every single person I know, myself included, who works full time in the arts has so many different revenue streams and hustles. It is extremely rare that a working artist will make a living doing just one thing. 
So, for example, I know someone who's an actor, but he also is a fight choreographer and a uh, special effects makeup artist. Mm-hmm. And like me, you know, I, I do burlesque, I do circus, I do modeling for life drawing classes, I, I strip, I do all kinds of things. And every time I see someone say that they tried to do burlesque full time and it didn't work, so they went back to their job, I want to affirm to them that, one, that's not a failure in any way. And two, very few people do just burlesque full Mm -hmm. time. You got to also like do costume design or makeup consults or things like that. Uh, So diversify is very important. However, I also want to say that if you are wanting to get into performing arts, it's so important to consume that art. If you want to be a writer, you should be reading a lot. If you want to be a burlesque dancer, you should be watching a lot of burlesque. I love going to burlesque shows. I love going to circus shows. I love subscribing to the channels of adult content creators. I think that producing burlesque made me a better burlesque performer just because I had to see so much of it every week. Uh, Mm. So definitely like go out, do that super fun research. It's a lot of fun and you will definitely be a better artist for it. I also want to emphasize um, that one of the best ways to improve yourself is to improve your foundational skills. So go out there and take beginner classes and all level classes, even if you're not a beginner. Everyone approaches foundational skills differently, and you never know when somebody's approach to a foundational skill will unlock a new ceiling for you. If I can give a personal example, I had been performing with fire and eating fire for seven years, more than seven years, by the time I had a chance to take a workshop with Shade Flame Water. And... Uh, it was a beginner class. There were people in the class, some of my peers in the burlesque world, who had never touched fire in their lives. Uh, And taking this class was wonderful because there were like tiny little details in his technical approach that removed barriers that I was experiencing for higher level skills. Mm. And It was just, it was so wonderful. I walked out of that class and I had a burn on the underside of my nostril. Uh, Shade Flame Water has this fantastic signature trick where he uh, exhales fire through his nose. Oh my God. (laughs) Uh, It's it's brilliant. Um, I left that class with a burn on the underside of my nostril from trying to do a trick that I had never done before. And uh, also a whole bunch of knowledge to be a better performer. Um, So yeah, definitely, like, even if you are an experienced performer, if you are an experienced dancer, go take a beginner dance class. If you are an experienced acrobat, go take an all levels acro class. Uh, Try those beginner things from your peers. God, David Ito in Toronto is a fantastic instructor for fire arts. Definitely want to give him a shout out. Um, But yeah, learn those beginner skills because you literally can never go wrong having stronger foundational skills and you never know when someone else's approach to basics will help you unlock your high level skills. Amazing advice from Rhapsody Blue. Thank you so much. So Rhapsody, I want to thank you so very much for being my very first guest on Behind the Screens. I really appreciate you being here today. It was a pleasure. So before we go, it's time for the plug. So can you tell the people what you're working on these days? Well, I'd like to take a moment to mention my long distance late night talk show, Babes and Bubbles, which happens every Saturday night at 10 p.m. Eastern. It's a great little platform where I interview two different artists every week about what is going on in their life and all other sorts of other things. It's been so much fun. I love a good late night talk show and it's been great to sit in the interviewer chair for once. So please do follow Babes and Bubbles on Instagram. Uh, 
every Saturday, 10 p.m. I can personally attest that Babes and Bubbles is super fun. I get myself a little bottle of something and sit down and just enjoy the show. So definitely check it out. Well, you were also a guest on one of the early Yes, episodes. I was a guest on Babes and Bubbles, and that was super, super fun. Now, where can the people find you on social media, Rhapsody? Well, you can find me on Instagram at Rhapsody Burlesque, on Twitter at Blue Burlesque. You can find me on Facebook as Rhapsody Blue. And uh, if you're on spicy sites, if you play your cards right, you might be able to find me there too. <laughs> so Rhapsody, thank you so, so much for taking the time to come on Behind the Screens. I appreciate you so much as an artist and just thank you again for everything that you do. The feeling is 100% mutual. Thank you. All right. Bye, hon. Bye.